How's everybody doing today? I wanted to talk to you about uh, the Predator 212 and what I've done to 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 help it out. And I noticed uh, my last video, everybody had uh, wanted to know how it did, and I'm going on past that, and I'm showing you what I'm doing next. So the first thing to do, take your engine apart, running the stock rod, is you need to open this hole up right here. <clears throat> so you need to order you a hone. And when you measure it, it's going to measure 1.189 from straight out of the box. And that's only about one to one and a half thousandths of uh, oil clearance on this on this uh, rod here. So what you do is you put this on your drill, you run it in here. You're basically smoothing up all your edges and you're going to open this uh, hole up here to a 1.191 or 9.2. You do not want to go above the 9.2. Um, that would be like three and a half thousandths oil clearance and that's about max that you want in this situation. Um, the second thing I did was I took valve lapping compound, a very small amount, uh, one pea size drop here and a pea size drop here, and I just moved it around inside the bearing. I slid the crank in it, and I put, uh, put the nut on the end of the crank, hooked a drill to it, and I spun it really, really fast and made the bearing wear it in, and then I uh, did that for about 30, 45 seconds, and, um, it really freed the bearing up a whole lot, a whole lot nicer than uh, what it was to begin with. Um, it wasn't bad to begin with. It was just somewhat tight. So I'm trying to reduce as much frictional drag as possible. Now, if you want longevity out of your engine, then I would say leave it stock. But if you want power and quickness and low, you know, low drag internally inside the engine, that's what I'm after here. These engines have a claim rule of $150, so I want to free up as much horsepower as I can as the engine is stock, taking it apart and tweaking all the parts that are there. So if someone buys it, it's not like, oh, he put a cam in it, that's why he's faster. No, I don't want to do that. I want to make as, as good internals that it comes with and free them up as much as possible, and we'll see you know what that does. <clears throat> now, the first set of rings I've got here, these are your Wiseco XC. These are your stock ones that I, I ordered another uh, batch of stock Hemi rings. And these are the old ones that I had been doing tests on. Now, I don't know how other people do it. I'm just doing uh, research and trial and error. Now, I will say this. I've tried putting a ring in a 196 block, heating it up, and letting it cool. That ruined the ring. What I'm trying to do is, basically, the explanation of this is, the gap here, when it closes and it forces against the cylinder wall, it's dragging the cylinder wall. So, if you can take a ring and compress it, alright, now say it takes 12 pounds of pressure to, to squeeze that ring shut. Now, what if you were able to take that ring and only use 6 pounds of pressure to shut it? So what that means is it's only got 6 pounds of external force pushing against the cylinder wall now as whereas uh, you know a stock one you'll have 12 pounds of pressure forcing out against the cylinder wall now so that would in decrease your frictional drag of your engine um, but I'm having a tough time learning how to get it right so that's what I'm um, I'm doing now I'm trying to get it right now as you can see I took the this uh, brand new ring on the inside you see how it's shiny it's not painted black anymore I squeezed the ring together and I held it together and I went on the inside of the ring and this is how I was told you're supposed to do it. You're not supposed to heat them and do that and, and shrink the rings because then they're no longer uh, a circular, uh, a true circular ring anymore. It might have a little bit of offset to it so it just it won't seal. I was getting blow by uh, on my engine tests. Um, so what I did, the ring measures uh, one point zero zero seven I believe or one point zero zero eight so I dropped it to a one point zero 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 on my micrometer so I took off uh I like seven or eight thousandths and um I'm I'm assuming that since the ring isn't as thick like this as the other one it won't have as much outward tension so we're gonna see if the little bit that I took off of here just shy of ten thousandths is gonna help the frictional drag of the engine 
Um, we bought one motor that had a different secondary ring and that motor was a whole lot faster. So we knew that whoever was doing it was going after the rings in order to open the engine up. So I'm going after the rings, the bearing, and the rod to see if I can make anything happen from that. So as far as the, the top ring goes, um, they say just leave that alone. And your, your oil ring here, the secondary ring, it is by far the thickest, heaviest ring in the engine. So that would be the one to, uh, to mess with in order to, to decrease the drag. Um, the oil rings, I'm just going to leave these the way they are. Um, the, these Wiseco XC rings, the, the second ring here, it's uh, 47 thousandths thick. It will not fit in the uh, groove of a stock piston. But as for the top ring, let me get it off here. The top ring actually has a, uh, a silver coating on it. And that silver coating, from what the uh, instructions say, is supposed to help uh, lower the friction in the engine or lower the friction on the cylinder wall. Um, I'm not going to run that yet. I'm going to run that in my next test. For now, I'm going to put the uh, the ring that I've, I've cut the inside some and the rest is going to be stock I'm going to run both bearings that are that I've uh, put the lapping compound in and I've opened up the uh, the rod there um, so so far that's what I've done to uh, to the engine that you saw in the first video and uh, there it is right there all torn down um, so we're gonna we're gonna see what happens um, I've got the uh, the timing advanced slightly on it. I guess stock is around 28, so I advanced it around 31 or 32 degrees, just a little bit um, to let that spark fire just a tidbit sooner and see uh, see if I can get any power gain from that. So uh, we're gonna see what happens, and uh, just stay tuned. Subscribe if you if you like the videos. Uh, if you want to see more. The more subscribers I get, the more viewers I know I have, and the more prone I will be to making uh, more videos in the future. So, uh, anybody want any help, got any questions, um, I, I videotape very little of what I really do. Um, I'll do all the work, all the R&D first, figure out what works, what doesn't, and then I'll, then I'll uh, make a video to share with you guys. So, uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe, and uh, I'll catch y'all on the next one.